Welcome to Heroes Next Door. Today on Station Rigs, we are getting back to the basics. This is the essentials of firefighting. So if you've been on the channel before, you've seen that we've already done Loyal Sock Station Cribs. This is the Station Rigs. We're gonna meet back up with Matt Hill. He's gonna walk us around. Hey Matt, good to see you again, brother. Tell us a little bit about the truck and about yourself. So my name is Matt Hill. I'm a lieutenant here at Loyal Sock. I've been a member here for about three years, and yeah, I'm going to show you our engine. Okay. So yeah, we've done a lot of station rigs over the last couple of years. We did a lot of rescues. We've done a lot of towers, special vehicles, and things like that. But this is the quintessential tool that right. we use for firefighting. Yeah, we have this set up as our primary attack engine, so it's it's meant to do engine work, go to fires. That's pretty much it. There's no like rescue tools or anything like that on it. A little bit about it. It's a 2013 Spartan. We've had it brand new since then, and it's been a great truck for us. So. Okay. Do you mind if we open it up? Yeah, it absolutely. We'll start here in the. Uh, Driver's compartment. Everything you need to drive and operate the apparatus. In the middle there, we have banks of scene lights, emergency lights, all that fun stuff, radios, uh, siren controllers, climate controls, just pretty much everything to control the truck you can get to either from the driver's side if you're driving or the officer can also flip scene lights on and stuff like that. Okay, much, so. okay. And uh, this is push button transmission. There's right. no key to it or yep. anything like that. No key, uh, automatic transmission, super easy to drive. Once you get used to the length of driving it, it's a little bit of a learning curve, but once you get past that, it's just like driving your car. Okay. Now, as we traveled around Pennsylvania and we traveled around the United States, we noticed that some people require CDL, some mm -hmm. don't. Does right. your company require CDL to drive here? We do not. We just obviously recommend or have them have their EVOC, your emergency vehicle operation course, and pumps one. And then occasionally, once you get further on your thing, uh, pumps two. Okay. We do also like them to have their driver operator pro board. A majority of our operators have that now, but it's not like a requirement, but it's like kind of push after a couple years of driving, you, you get that. So. Awesome. It, uh, seat six, we have six full air pack seats. Okay. Or actually five. Uh, the driver's air pack is in the engineer's compartment, which I'll show you here in a second. But we have room for four firefighters back here, an officer, and then the driver. So gas meter, box lights, radios, and all that fun stuff. Now, I also noticed when we travel is that, you know, some people are assigned masks, some people, mm -hmm. they have masks on the truck. Do you guys right. get assigned masks? So once you get your interior firefighter, the station will provide you a mask, give you a mask bag, so you can have that with your locker, with your gear. And then for people that don't, don't if we have ride-alongs or if you just forget your mask, we do have masks in all of our trucks also. So okay. Be I, I noticed on the door there, you got a little mm -hmm. EMS there. Yep, so this is our EMS compartment. We do have like just your basic first in bag, AED, suction, dressings, and stuff like that. So. Okay, yeah, all the basic essentials. Yep. Uh, here we just have some extra hose for connecting the hydrant to other trucks, stuff like that. So kind of one thing that's a little bit unique about this truck is it's an engine, obviously, but the the pump panel is behind roll-up doors. Yeah, that's kind of nice. It keeps it like, a lot cleaner, I think. Yeah, that was kind of the thought process behind this. Our previous engine obviously had an open open pump panel, and this truck runs quite a bit, so keeping that grime, the winter, all that stuff off the, the pump panel. Do you find by doing that, you have a lot less maintenance that you have to worry about the, the poles and stuff like that? Yeah, so obviously you still need to like do your maintenance and like lube everything, but if you seem to be doing it less than on some of our other open pumps, so okay. yeah. Your cross lace here, it looks like you can go either side. Mm -hmm. Yep, so we have two 200 foot crosses that come off this side, okay. and then two 200 foot crosses that come off that side. Each of them, or one of them has a smooth bore, the other one has a combination nozzle. Okay. Now tell me a little bit about how they're encased in here, because I noticed that's a little Yeah, so it's actually kind of how it's like enclosed in this sheet metal and stuff. It's kind of a pain if you would have to repack it. So it's actually super, super nice. You can just like lift these trays out, set it down. You can repack your hose here and then make your connection to your pony section and then just put it right back in. So yeah, it's almost like a trick of the trade to do that. Kind yeah, of absolutely. absolutely. Yeah, that's pretty slick. Uh, five inch down below and then just your, like you said, your basic pump panel. Okay. Uh, this here is our engineer's compartment here. We have our duty crew for the day, their engineer's, yeah. his gears on there. Uh, behind that is an air pack, same as Scott as we, we use right. up front. Uh, now, one of the reasons we've done this, I, I've seen this before, is because your driver doesn't necessarily have to have his gear on all right. the time. Right. You know, he's not getting in the fire unless something really bad is going yeah. on. Yeah. So making it safer without those big old boots, pants, mm -hmm. and coat, it makes it a whole lot safer for him to drive by keeping his gear back here yeah. and then getting dressed at the scene if he needs to get right. dressed. And absolutely, like our duty crew staff has a uniform anyway, so if they get off the truck, people can obviously see, hey, that's a firefighter. He's already got boots on that are steel toe, so he's already fine for the fire ground. Right. So it just, and like you said, it's, it's kind of a pain to drive with your gear on sometimes so right. uh, wheel chocks some cones and other adapters uh, here nice slide out trays yeah everything's super easy slides out this 
I think they said this truck took about eight months to just fully spec and plan. Okay. So they thought of a lot of stuff. Right. Uh, I love how it's all mounted too. Right, right. We had this this mounted out of house and uh, came back looking great. So okay. uh, we have some hose if you need to do some like gross decon. We have a heated uh, outlet. So like say your, your gear gets all dirty after a fire and it's freezing cold out. Right. You're not, you're not putting 20 degree water that's in the pump onto you, you're, it's, it's heated up, so okay, it okay. runs through the engine. Yeah, it's something I haven't seen too often. You know, all, all too often we're pulling a ceiling and we're getting all that insulation. Right. Yeah. By the time we get back, my helmet's full, my coat's yeah, full yeah, of insulation. Yeah. And you don't Just, quite want to get in the truck looking like that, right, so you're right. gonna wash yourself off. Okay. And then all of the adapters and stuff throughout the, uh, the county, so it's kind of funny, you go to different like municipalities and stuff like that, they have different different fittings, different threads. So we have just about everything that if we would go mutual aid anywhere, we can we can still use their stuff. And, and that's part of that pre-planning stuff, learning what your neighbors have right. and, and how to right. work together. Uh, beside the wheel wheel hill, we have some uh, cylinders, extra cylinders. Down here we have some uh, uh, tarps for overhaul and stuff like that. Uh, up here, we have a drop down with all of our saws. Okay. So we have our rotary saw, roof saw, and then just a regular chainsaw. Okay, and they're still all gas. You haven't switched mm -hmm. over to electric. Yep, or we're, yet. we're kind of starting to get there with like e-tools. A lot of pushback with membership. Like we like the, the gas <laughs> stuff, tradition so. is hard to, yeah. hard to break. Yeah. But you know, we've seen you know some stations start to transition. We'll mm -hmm. get one saw, and we'll get the you know we'll stick with those, and right. then eventually they kind of switch over. But you know, yeah. there's pros and cons for both, and really Absolutely. it's up to each department to yeah. kind of look what they at, what area they're in, mm -hmm. you know, and how effective is that tool compared to the newer right stuff. right uh, this is kind of our tool compartment we have all of our hand tools and stuff like that on slide outs we have these tubes here with our New York hooks on yeah in. yeah so you got to wrap it in there realize that. Yeah. And then the halogen bars and everything is kind of matter so you just kind of slide it out grab right. what you need uh, yeah this is the tool this is the cabinet that you go to that you know you're gonna work right right so we were gonna kind of try to mount stuff inside but with those inside compartments you really can't so we kind of wanted everything in one compartment so that people are getting out. If they're not stretching a line, they know that they, everyone needs to come back here, grab a tool, and then you can go to work, so. Right. Little giant ladder, and then some more hand tools, brooms, lights, stuff like that. So. Okay. Making our way around to the back. Mm -hmm. uh, up top here, we have uh, our hard suction storage. Okay. I believe those are each 15 footers, so we have plenty of hard sleeve if we ever need to draft from any, any static water source or anything like that. We have a couple of pre-connects. We have, uh, two and a half inch pre-connect. Okay. And we have a 300 or 400 foot long line, inch and three quarter. So if we need to get to the side C or anything like that, any place, we, we have a pre-connected line for that. Right, and it looks like your blitz line's already hooked up yep, too. Yep, blitz fun, it, uh, line is uh, pre-connected as well. Okay. So you can either pull it all off or pull what you need, break it, and then you can also do use that discharge right there, so. Okay. Here, we have some adapters, cord adapters, electrical adapters road flares and then our exhaust fans. Exhaust fans. Yeah. And that's on a tray, so that comes right out so you're not like reaching over and hurting yourself or anything like that. Okay, so. yeah, you got a nice big step off the mm -hmm. back here uh, for safety to get up there, right. but making that drawer come out was gonna help with the back. I also noticed that these are electric plug-ins, that they're not battery powered. Right, right? But we're also looking at battery powered fans. Uh, our mutual aid uh, department we run with a lot has those and we're really starting to like those. It's more like we ask them to pull it off instead of pulling ours. Cause, <laughs> so this does have an onboard generator and then two 300 foot uh, cord rails come off either side. So okay. that's how we, okay. how we do Ladder storage and longer pike pulls. Okay. So we have a 16 foot roof, 24 foot extension ladder, a eight foot and 10 foot pike pull, and then an attic ladder, okay. 10 foot attic ladder. Explain to our viewers what a roof ladder is compared to a regular extension ladder. So a roof ladder, essentially the only difference is it's just a straight ladder with hooks on the end. So at the peak of a roof, you can hook it. So uh, if you're like cutting off of it or need to get to the roof for some reason, uh, you can hook it on there and then you're able to climb safely. You have plenty of scene lights too, I see. Yep, all you had the portables and then you got ones actually on the mm -hmm. back of the truck here. Uh, this is more of our like high rise and like adapters compartment. So we have a chimney kit here. This does run to crashes when either it's out already or it's obviously second due to the rescue. So we do have a little bit of kitty litter, oil dry and stuff yeah. like that. Okay. Hydrant bag with some hydrant adapters and a hydrant kit. So we have a pony section and stuff like that for, uh, for hydrants. Right. So you're kind of, if you're the get off man, uh, we do not technically have pre-made riding assignments because okay. we don't know if we're going to get three or six or how many we're going to get on a truck. So it's kind of up to your officer. The officer's divvying, hey, you're going to do this, you're going to do this, you're going to do this. If you're the get off man, you come back grabbing the hydrant bag, grabbing the five inch and wrapping the hydrant. Tell our viewers a little bit more about the station itself. You yeah. guys are a combination station, right? Right. So we have paid fire staffing throughout the day. 
uh, Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. Second truck out, volunteers that ride in there and that, it's all complimented by volunteers. Weekends and nights is 100% volunteer. It's a good thing to yeah, have, you yeah. know, and a lot of the volunteer stations that have been 100% volunteer for right. hundreds of years, you guys have been around since, what, 1925? 1925, yeah. You know, you started as volunteer, we're not taking any of that away, but you have to supplement it. You right. want to make sure that your neighborhood and is safe. And we, we made that jump about 10, 15 years ago on the EMS side, because we are all volunteer EMS 24 seven. The call volume, like I said, we have 12,000 people in the township that reside here, but during the day we have a bunch of doctor's offices, schools, restaurants, so it, we're looking at 15, 20,000 during the day at times. Now, if I'm just moving into the area or I'm watching this today, and mm -hmm. you know, I'm interested in volunteering, right. how do I go about doing that? So you can either stop in here uh, at our station, uh, 715 Northway Road is our address. Uh, we always have people here during the day uh, so either just stop and knock on the door, ring the doorbell, somebody will let you in. We have paper applications here or uh, online at station18.org. Okay. Uh, we have a website that you can fillable application on there. So we're a very, very welcoming. Uh, if you have zero training, we're more than happy to take you. We offer free company trainings and we do reimburse for trainings. Same with any fire search, rescue search, anything like that, whatever your interest is. If it's more EMS, if it's fire, if it's just admin, if it's just doing like uh, uh, social hall events or uh, fundraising and stuff like that, we. We could use somebody for everything. So. Okay. So if you viewers are out there, you you know interested in volunteering at Loyal Sock, come on down. They definitely can use your help. We appreciate it. Uh, before we continue on, though, make sure you hit that subscribe, hit that notification, smash the like button, and share these videos so we can get more people to understand. You know, volunteerism is still needed. Right. Just to finish this compartment out quick, we have some more toolboxes and like spanners and stuff like that. And then we have two high rise kits. We do have a couple of mid rise, I wouldn't call them high rises, like eight to, or six to eight floors. Okay. We have a couple of hotels like that and stuff like that. Uh, but these are more used for our commercial, like we have a large supermarket, uh, manufacturing. So it's more like using a leader line and then branching off with uh, some more uh, inch right. and three quarter hand lines and right. stuff like that. Maybe priming the standpipe or something like that. Right, yep. right, right, right. This is a swing out tool board. We have some flat headed axes, pick headed axes, stuff like that. Inside we have a set of irons, a small closet hook, and then a hydro ram. Okay. So a hydro ram, how I kind of like to explain it, it's like a like a hydraulic, pretty much fire, little firefighter. So you just kind of pump it up and it will force doors for you. It just okay. kind of splits it open. Yeah, like some that. people call it a rabbit tool. Rabbit tool, yep, yep. 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 It's a, it's a great uh, manpower multiplier because forcing a door is tiring and all your gear and stuff like that. It, or if it's a commercial door and it's just going to be a pain, go, to, go for the hydro ring yeah, so you can't yeah. beat it. Here is more adapters down here and manifolds. And also here is our, all of our ABC fire extinguishers and uh, water. What's the difference between the red versus the, the silver? So, so the silver, these are our pressurized, pressurized water can. So it's got two and a half gallons of water. And then we actually do put a pyro cap in it just kind of as an extra kick. Uh, some departments just put straight water. We found with the uh, the pyro cap and stuff like that, if it's a engine compartment fire in, a, in like a sedan or something like that, one or two cans can put that fire out. Okay. So, yeah. And an ABC fire extinguisher as well. That's more of your regular combustibles, like your your wood, paper, stuff like that. Did you find? And then we have more specialty ones for like electrical fires, uh, kitchen fires, and stuff like that. So okay. More some some manifolds and gate valves down here. This is kind of like an extension of the engineer's compartment. Uh, if they need to like have multiple five inches going somewhere, so then they can come to this compartment. Right. This is the other side of the pump panel. Okay, so you got discharge and Yep, and then here's the where side. those other uh, other crosses get pulled and stuff like that. More intakes and discharges on this side. So those trays that we talked about on the other side, this is the same tray that goes all the way through. Mm -hmm. Yep. Can you pull it out transfer. either side? Or? You, you can. Uh, you can pull the tray out either side. Uh, we have the cross lays kind of set up just pull off one side. Okay. So, yeah. All right. And here we have more hose, obviously. Uh, we, and we have it rolled so they can, the engineer can easily roll it out and then be able to connect to another truck or a hydrant. Okay. Like that, so. Now one of the things I noticed when we first walked in is this kind of real big front bumper. What's mm -hmm. up there? So we have another pre-connect hand line up there. And then also we have what we call our officer's tool. It's just a shorter like New York hook with a wedge on the end. So this is a hundred foot with a combination nozzle, uh, like car fires, trash fires, stuff like that. We okay. pull this. Uh, and also in here in town, we have very short setbacks. So if it's something in the living room or, or if it's just like an odor investigation that we don't want to pull a full cross lay, this will reach to the back of that house, that single okay. story house most of the time. So if we beach this in the close to the front yard, we can easily stretch that through the front doors. Very nice. And you got the old federal queue up front. Yep. Yep. I have that. So this is a very cool truck. This yep. is, you know, one of the things that, you know, we haven't done a whole lot on the channel is standard, you know, fire engines, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, or fire trucks. And, you know, it's 
cool to see these. A lot of people like to see all the specialty stuff that we talked about, right. but this is the bread and butter yeah. of doing fire. Yeah, and this is our bread and butter as a company. We love stretching lines, forcing doors, putting fire out. That's like our, our thing. So this is what that this truck is set up for. Okay. Last but not least, up top, do you have any coffins up there? There are there are four coffin okay. boxes. Some of them are very narrow, so they're not used. Really up there, all we have is a Stokes basket. Okay. And you don't have a blitz fire off the top? Oh, uh, we do. Gun? Yeah, we do have a deck gun, and that is operated either from, or there is no valve to open it up from up top. It's down down here, so the engineer would have to. Engineer run. runs yeah. it from there. Yeah. Matt, thank you very much for yep, walking no us problem. around. Thank you all for watching. This was another Station Rigs with Loyal Sock. Hit subscribe, hit notifications, smash those like buttons, share, and don't forget, we now have a members page. Hit the join button and see some behind the scenes. We'll see you again next week. Station Rigs, so let's go take a look. We are in Loyal Sock, Pennsylvania, and we're gonna go take a look. This is an engine with Loyal Sock, Pennsylvania. Let's go take a look. I always end it with that. <laughs> Welcome back to Heroes Next Door. I'm gonna invite you to do a Station Rigs with us. This is one of the essentials of firefighting. Your your standard engine or something like that. This is one of the essentials of firefighting. And just stop right there. I like that. I want to stop right there. Ready? Make a couple comments below. What do you guys think? Is this a tool that they, every fire truck should, or make a comment below. Is this something that every fire department should have?